Hi there guys, I'm Manny K. Soso. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the code behind Deep Storage. So then, let's get started. Alrighty, so here we have the code for Deep Storage. It's not a whole lot, so it should not take too long to understand this whole code. But we will start off at the top. So here we have the different alias lines. And what alias lines are is just defining a variable. So if we think of it in terms of you know, programming things, we're saying that in this case, uh, D0, which is the actual very top left screw on the IC housing itself, we're assigning that a variable name of sorter. And the reason why we're doing this is so we don't have to call D0 every time we want to call, you know, the sorter. So it's just basically a way to say that instead of you know having to write D0 everywhere we write the name sorter and it makes it easier to understand if you have these labels for everything so when you're reading through the code you know okay so I'm talking about the sorter and these apply to the same lines all the way down through D5. Here D4 I have a note of not required. We will get down to that, which specifically deals with uh, line 27, but then we have these R0 and R1, etc. numbers. These also work very similarly to the D0 to D5 numbers. Uh, you have 15, it's technically 16 of these numbers if you include R0 and R15, and these are variables inside of the script. So then this hash is stored in memory and we use hash a couple times and we load its value in. But it works exactly the same way that the sorter does. Instead of having to call R0, we give it a name that we can call instead and it references that name. Then down here on line 14, I have a label and I call it main. And it's important to have these labels so you can jump around your code to specific points. Because if we go down here to the end of where I say J main here at J29, I jump back to that label and then execute the next line after that and keep going. Here at line 15, I am setting D0, which is that sorter, and I'm setting its mode to 2. And basically what that is doing is it's setting it to um, a weight. So it's, it's just basically locking down the sorter until I give it the command to open. And that's just to make sure that the, the, uh, the sorter stays locked and the item doesn't move until the user has told it to move. Then this L is loading this next uh, which is R1 which is the next item next which is the button here at D1 and it's the setting so basically I am loading the setting from the button now normally this will be a zero but in the case that if you click a button it will become one so I'm loading that setting into uh, into a variable and I'm also loading the export button in the next line and I'm taking it from the export button and I'm also doing the same for the lever and by default all of these values will start at 0 and when they're activated they will start at 1 then I want to load you know the hash so instead of doing a regular load I need to load a specific slot inside of the sorter and the reason for that is the sorter has multiple slots associated with it it has an input slot and an output slot so then I need to load which I'm gonna load the slot I'm gonna put that variable into the hash variable from the sorter of zero which is the input slot and I'm gonna load the occupant hash so now I have the hash of the item that's actually in there. But I also want to get, uh, you know, if it's occupied or not. So I load the occupied of the sorter 
in slot 0 and if it's occupied. Because if it's not occupied, we want to get an item in the sorter so there is an item for the user to see. Then I'm also going to load the quantity that is in slot 0. So I'm going to load the slot of quantity of the sorter of slot 0 and I'm getting specifically the quantity variable. Once I have that, I'm going to set db, which db is a special variable. It is actually what you can physically see on the IC housing. It is the setting of the housing itself. So if I were to look at the housing itself, which I can right now, you can see it's displaying this number. And this number is an item hash. So then I am setting that hash. So I'm setting this db, which is the variable. I'm setting the setting for it, and I'm setting it to hash. And this means that other IC housings or other codes or even displays can read this number. Obviously, regular displays will not display the actual item it is. You must have a console with the uh, hash display in it for it to read that hash correctly and it will go get that item. Next, we have VNZE. So then, let's, let's look up what VNZE is. And scrolling down. And here we see B and E Z is branch to line C. Oops, nope, that is A Z, B and E Z. Branch to line B, which is this one here, if A does not equal zero. So remember when I said that I'm loading these settings um, and by default they are zero so if I were to click the next button that setting becomes one so then it's only doing this line like it's only gonna go to this um, this line which next item is down here this label so it will only go to that line if that number does not equal zero. And we know for buttons and levers, the only two values we can have are zero and one. And one is when it is activated or set to on or open. And when you put a label down, so here at line 14 and here at J main at 29, J takes in a number of any kind. So labels have the added bonus of counting as a line number. So anything that says branch to line whatever, in our case the V N E Z branch to line B, next line actually has stored in it um, 31. So this next item is actually saying 31. But what's nice about it is if you move, if I were to move this line down, you know, all the way down to the bottom or anywhere else, it's still going to keep that label as whatever line it's associated with. And being easy, I do this a couple times so you can see, load the setting of the lever. So if the lever is that, we're going to go to the next item uh, for this next B and EZ. We're going to get the next button, and it does the same thing because the lever just continually rotates through it. Uh, the export button jumps down to this export item here at line 35, and then occupied, if it's a 1 or if it's a 0, because BEQZ, so let's go, let's go look for that. BEQL, where are you? Here it is. And BEQZ is branch to line B if A equals zero. So 
remember when I read that occupied slot? If it's empty, we want to get the next item. We want to tell the silo to open for a second and export an item. Then we have this special line of code, which is BDNS. Now, what is BDNS? So do you remember at the top of the script to where I said that D4 is an optional value? Well, BDNS is basically saying if it is set, if this value is set, uh, in this case this screw, which is, a, um, which is an LED display, if this value is set, go to the next line. Otherwise, jump to this line. So basically all we're saying is, you know, check to make sure this uh, screw is set. If it's not, move on. So if I have it set, it's going to go to the next line. If I don't have it set, it's going to go back to main. Uh, if it's not there, I'm going to set that display, that LED display, its setting, and it's going to be set to that quantity number in slot 0 which is the import slot. And then finally we jump back down the main if we haven't done anything. And it will loop through this continuously. Next let's look at the next item. So here when next item is run it's gonna say set that sorter its output to zero. And that output to zero is specifically the left or the right slot. And because we have it set to mode 2, the left side is going back in, and we can look at this. So here we can see that when an item is in slot 0, and we tell it to export, it's going to go to 0, which is this left slot, and on an export, it's going to be 1. So it's going to go to this right slot, and it will come back through here, and it will go all the way back into the silo. And then we go to J get item and we'll get to that line in a second. On export item, we're just doing the same thing as next item, except we're changing the slot it's outputting to. So we're gonna set that sorter's output to one. So we'll export that singular item that's in slot zero and move it to the right side for the export. And then we'll jump to get item as well. And get item. All it does is we are going to set the silo to open. We're going to yield, which yielding is just waiting a second. So we're going to wait a second, and then we're going to close the silo again. So we're going to set the silo to open to zero. So we're going to open it. We're going to give it a second to export the item, and then we're going to close it. We're going to yield once more to give that item time to travel from the export of the silo to the sorter and then we're going to jump back to main. And then we jump all the way back up to line 14. So then let's look at the execution now of this code. If it, So right now what it's doing is it's going from main, it's loading all these values, and if the user isn't doing anything, it's going to move past all of these lines because everything is set to zero and occupied is set to one. So it's going to get all the way down and we're finally going to get back to J to jump to the main again. And we'll keep doing this until the user does something. If I click the button, if I click the uh, next button, I'm going to go all the way through these, load my values again. Then I'm going, my lever is still zero, so it's going to move on. And then if I click the next button, it will jump down to the next item. It will, it will tell the sorter to export to the left side, and it will open the silo for a second. If I had the export button, it will go down through the code, loading the values again. I will not get the next item from the lever. I will not get the next item from the button. I will instead have a one for my export item, finally export it, telling it to export to the right side of the sorter, 
getting the next item and jumping back up to main finally for the lever starting at main I will load all my values and because the lever is one it's going to do this it's going to go down to the next item it's going to tell the sorter to open up on the left side it's going to go to the silo open it for a second come back to main and it's going to keep doing that until finally the lever is zero again so it will keep telling the sorter export to the left open the silo export to the left open the silo until finally the lever is set to the close position or zero and that is basically it this is probably one of the more simplistic codes you will get um, there are were there are far more advanced things like going through all of these different um, basically if statements so all of these are basically if statements so this B and E Z B D N S those are all essentially if statements um, and then you'll have values all the way down here like moves and mods um, so for example move that deals with um, moving the registers and registers are basically like kind of like an array but um, it's in terms of actual programming they are essentially just memory slots and you can move them you know essentially wherever you want All right, so that is the code behind Deep Storage. If you guys are interested, I can do another thing going on to, you know, the more advanced concepts and even going into the code of the prototype of um, the more advanced version of Deep Storage. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It only takes a second. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Have a good day.